What is up everyone? Welcome back to Morales tutorial video. Today we're taking a look at how you can store your NFT metadata on a Firebase storage bucket. In the decentralized Web3 world, you might be a bit taken aback that you might want to store your NFT metadata on a centralized server. But in some use cases, the matter of the fact is that your NFT holders are set and immutable on the blockchain. But if the holders know that sometimes you might be changing the image, for example, you might update the NFT image every month or make updates to the metadata, it might be very useful to have your NFT metadata stored on a centralized server where it's easy to access and change like here on Firebase. So if we take a look, we have two folders here on Firebase, a metadata folder where we have all these JSON files. If we open one up over here, like so, we have the NFT metadata, we have the description, the attributes, the image, which is also stored on Firebase and the name of the NFT. If we take a look at the image, this is also stored on Firebase, it looks like so. And now after we store this NFT metadata, we can use our contract to use the URL for the metadata to have that as the token URI and then services like OpenSea, for example, can find the metadata that is stored on a centralized Firebase server and get the data. We have the properties, we have the image and so on and so forth. So if you're excited for this, let's stay stuck in and build this out. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020, and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym, and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, to get started, head over to Firebase.com and your Firebase console. If you have a project already, use that, or you can add a project. We'll call it, for example, Moon NFTs in this case and then press continue. You don't have to now allow Google Analytics. You can if you want and create the project. All right, now that's created, press continue. And over here, you have your Firebase project. You can go over here and press the build button and over here in storage, allow for storage. So getting started with storage, you can start in test mode just to give everyone access and done, done. It's creating a default bucket for us. Let's wait for that to happen. And now that that's finished, you have storage set up for your Firebase project. One more thing you have to do, press this cog over here, project settings and press service accounts. Over here, you'll want to scroll down and create a new private key over here and generate that key. It'll create a JSON file for you, which we'll use a bit later over here. But now you can go ahead and open up your favorite IDE. I use Visual Studio Code and let's get a project set up there. Radio, beautiful, beautiful. So on my local machine, I created a folder called Moon NFTs and let's initialize it as a Node.js project by running npm in it here in the terminal. Press enter a couple of times so it starts off for you and it should create a package.json file for you. We can add a index.js file, touch index.js, and then install our dependencies, npm i, firebase admin, and uuid. Beautiful. So now we have a node module, SWOD folder, package.json, and index.js. Last thing we have to do is we downloaded that JSON for the service account previously. So open up Google Chrome. We have this file over here. Let's close this down a little bit and we can drop this folder into our file structure over here. And here in the file, we can rename it to service account.json like so. And this is something you have to keep secret. This is just a demonstration project. So now we can jump into index.js and start building things out. You can close down the terminal and first of all, requiring our dependencies. All right. So first of all, of course, we have to get Firebase. And then if you want to provide access tokens for your files, you have to provide the UUID package. This is kind of a nice to have, not a must. And then finally, we want this service account JSON files so we can access our Firebase bucket for the project we just created. And talking about that, we can create a admin variable where we use a Firebase admin to initialize our app and we use as credentials the service account JSON file we already imported to this folder. So over here. So now we have access to our Firebase project. And to get access to the storage bucket, we have to create a storage reference. So like so, go ahead and create a variable called storage reference and use our admin variable to use the storage and bucket methods. And for the bucket, we have to provide the bucket name and we can get this from Firebase itself. So jump back into Google Chrome. So you should be in this project settings page, jump back into the storage tab and you have this bucket name over here, which you can copy the folder path to jump back into Visual Studio Code and insert it in over here. So now we have access to our storage bucket. Now it's just a matter of creating a function where we can import files from our folder to Firebase itself. All right, so starting off, let's just create that asynchronous function. We can call it upload file and we have to provide the path in our own file directory where we can get the file we want to upload and then the file name we want to store it as 
on our Firebase storage bucket. And then we create a storage variable that uses the upload method to upload from a path from our own file directory to Firebase a public file with a destination on Firebase bucket with the image folder and the any file name we suggest in the upload file function call. And then we have this metadata object where you have a metadata object within it, where we define a Firebase storage download tokens, where we use the UUID package to generate a access token. So this is just for best practices. If you want to have access tokens on Firebase side, we'll actually allow to not have access token to view our metadata, but you can provide access tokens if you you'd like. Now then in this function, we can just return the storage variable to show you what's going on. And then it's just a matter of calling this upload file function to be able to store files on our Firebase storage bucket. So let's call the function over here at the bottom, like so. So it's an asynchronous function where we await the upload file function call with a path to our file directory, we don't have a images folder right now. So we have to create a images folder where we have a PNG image with name one. And then on Firebase side, we'll save it to an image folder with one.png as the file name. And then we'll also console log the result result over here in our Node.js app just to make sure that we know what's happening. So first of all, let's create that images folder over here images like so and then let's add a image over here let me just bring it in so now in the images folder we have a one png image and it is this moon like so so now we should be ready to upload our first image to firebase so let's save this open up our terminal and give it a whirl so run node index.js and look at this time created right now we just uploaded a png image to our firebase storage bucket and we have all these details of it if we go check out our firebase storage so open up google chrome if we refresh the page look at this now we have an image folder and within this image folder we have one png image and look at that, that is our image over here. And we can even get the image URL. This is the access token I was talking about, but we can even remove the access token. You don't have to have that because on Firebase side, we're allowing anyone to view these images. So how cool is that? Now we have uploaded one NFT image to Firebase. But now let's check out how we can do a bulk upload. So jump back into Visual Studio Code, close down the terminal. And of course, currently we only have this one image in our images folder. So let's go ahead and add a few more so we can do a bulk upload like so. So now we have images one through 10 and they're all different types of images with kind of different traits, but in the same collection. Now, what we can do is go into index.js and here where we upload file, we can go ahead and write a for loop. So because we have one through 10, let's write the for loop starting at one and where the index is less than 11, close this for loop. And rather than console logging our response, we can remove the variable call and console log uploaded image number I. And this will just loop through all the images in our images folder and upload them into our Firebase storage bucket. But of course, we have to give this specific names. So we're calling the ith element every time. So we can use template literals to get i and store that as the path name and the file name over here, like so. So now this is all we have to do. Save that. We're going to loop through all the images in here and store them in their separate files on our Firebase storage bucket. So go ahead over here and run node index js again and it starts uploading your images one through ten beautiful that's finished now jump back into google chrome we can refresh the page and look at this now we have image one image ten two so on and so forth and they all have the same image url over here so this is image two but if we just change the two over here to a seven we get the image url for image seven so how cool is that we have all these NFT images now stored in our Firebase storage bucket, but now let's create a metadata bucket where we can reference the images that are stored in this image folder. So jump back into Visual Studio Code. You can actually just close this and jump back into Visual Studio Code, close down the terminal, and let's create a metadata folder over here. All right, so let's just click index.js and create another folder over here called metadata. And in this metadata folder, let's input all our JSON files for the metadata of our NFTs. So you'll probably have this yourself, but let me just input some sample data in here, like so. So now we have 10 JSON files, which we can refer to all our 10 image files. So if we take a look at it, each of them have a description, attributes, 
and a name key and a image key, which refer to the variables that are seen in the images themselves. So now for our image keys, we just have to pass the image URL that is stored on our Firebase storage bucket. So let's go get that, go to Google Chrome. So this is the image URL, copy that, jump back into Visual Studio Code, paste that in here, but just make sure that your image is not 7.png, but 1.png. And now do this exact same process for all the metadata files. So your two will have image 2.png, three will have 3.png, four will have 4.png, and so on and so forth. So now your metadata are linked to your image URIs. And now jumping into index.js, we can modify this file slightly because now we're saving into a images folder, but now let's change it so that we're saving files into a metadata folder. So first things first, the destination will be metadata slash file name. And then when we do our loop, Let's loop through the metadata folder in our own file structure. And we also already named them i.json, not Bing. So we take the PNG and change it to a JSON like so. And then we can just say uploaded meta number, whatever. And that is all it is. Now opening up your terminal once more, you can run node index.js once more. And this time you'll start uploading your metadata into a different folder on your Firebase storage bucket. And next things next, we can check them out and then use those as the NFT metadata for our smart NFT smart contract. So now that's finished, jump back into Google Chrome, check out your Firebase storage bucket, refresh this, and a new folder is created, metadata over here. And look at this, we have all these JSON files. And if we open this one, check it out. Look at this, we have all the NFT metadata and we have the image URL, which links to the correct image for that NFT. How cool is that? So now all these resources like OpenSea and Morales can find the image for your NFT. So now you have all your NFT metadata bulk uploaded to Firebase and it's as simple as that. Now next, let's look at how we can make a simple NFT smart contract and use the metadata stored here in Firebase to save it on the blockchain. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this browser-based IDE for smart contract creation called remix.org. If you're familiar with this, great. If you're not, don't worry, just head over to remix.ethereum.org and create a new script. This file will be available in the description as well below. So this is simply a NFT smart contract that only has one function to create a token and set the token URI. We, we're setting it to a empty string right now, but let's go ahead and see how we can set the token URI to the URL pointing to our Firebase storage bucket for each NFT that we've stored there. All right, so starting off, let's just look at the metadata URLs we have stored on Firebase and they look like this. Let's copy everything before your one.json over here. Copy that and jump back into Remix because that will be the initial point of our token URI. So our token URI over here, we can change it to string. Then within the string brackets, write abi.encode packed, another set of brackets, and in here, with a comma, we can separate all the strings that we want to make each of our unique token URIs. So of course, first, we'll have the base URI we just copied. So it'll be everything before the one.json, then add a comma. And here in the create token function, you see that we have this new item ID UN256 variable, which increments a token ID variable every time the function is called. So starting at zero, the first NFT will have a token ID of one. And the next time this create token function is called, the token new item ID will be two. So we'll have to use the new item ID, and we're going to use this strings library from Open Zeppelin to turn that UN256 into a string. So go ahead and write strings to string and then new item ID. And then finally, if we go over here and check out the token URI, we see that after the token URI, we have dot JSON alt equals media. So we copy that and have that as the final part of each token URI, add that in here. So now every time a new token is created, they have their unique token URI, which points to the corresponding Firebase storage file, which has metadata details for that NFT. And that is honestly how simple it is. Next, we'll just have to compile this contract and deploy it and create a token and we'll see how it works. Okay, so going over here into the sidebar, into the Solidity logo, go ahead and compile your Moon NFT Sol contract. You'll get a green check mark if it compiles successfully. 
then open the deploy tab. We can open this up slightly more and go ahead and as the environment, choose injected provider MetaMask. Make sure that on MetaMask, you're on a testnet, or if you want to do this on a mainnet, go ahead. I'll just use testnet. We're on the Polygon testnet over here, and we have this account that has 32 Matic. So everything's working fine, and we can then just go ahead and deploy. But before we do that, to see how the deployment is going, you can open up the terminal by dragging from the bottom over here, and then press deploy. This should open up MetaMask. Ask for a contract appointment to make sure that it processes fast. Go ahead and edit the suggested gas fee to go high. Save that and then confirm. Now the creation of NFT is pending. And look at that. We get a green check mark that deployment of our NFT smart contract was successful. And over here in your left sidebar, you'll see that the deployed contracts now has a contract on the Polygon testnet that has been deployed. You can open it up. And you see all the functions you can use. So the ERC721 has some built in functions, but we created this create token function, which allows us to create a new NFT. So we can just try it out over here. We can create the token. MetaMask pops up, ask us if we want to create the token. Again, we can edit the gas fee to make sure that this process is really fast. Go to high, save that, and then make sure we confirm. And now our transaction of creating a token is pending. And that transaction went through beautiful. So now if we check out the other functions that this NFT contract has, there is a token URI function here at the bottom, and we can specify a token ID. So let's specify token ID one because we've only created one token and press the token URI. Look at this, we can copy this. And this should now point us to our Firebase metadata URL. How beautiful is that our NFT smart contract has created a token and the token URI is the URI that's stored on our Firebase storage bucket. How cool is that? We can try to do this again. So let's create another token. Make sure we go through the same thing here on MetaMask. Confirm. Creating a token is pending. The NFT token ID2 was created successfully, and we can go check out the token URI for token ID2, token URI, and it's the same one except the 2.json is amended over here. We copy that. So here, let's see the weather is night, the moon is gray. Let's try and change this to this new one. And the weather is night, but the moon type is mystic. And also our image has changed for this and the name for this token is moon Two. So how great is that? You've created a NFT smart contract where you're using as the token URI for the NFTs, your Firebase storage bucket. And now, for example, if you wanted to update the images for your NFT token holders, you could easily do that over here, just updating new images over here if you needed to, if that was part of your NFT tokens utility. Now, let's as a final check, let's go ahead and get the NFT contract address here from Remix so we can copy it from here. Let's go first, Morales.io. Go to the documentation page, check our API reference, and press the NFTs tab over here in the left sidebar and get contract NFTs over here. We can test it out by pasting our token address over here that we got from Remix. Then the chain we deployed on was Polygon Mumbai, so the Mumbai testnet. And now trying it out, Morales has already queried the blockchain and it's found two NFTs that have been created on this NFT contract. And over here, we get the result as an array of two of the NFTs and we get the token IDs and the token URI over here is found by Morales as well. So now when you're building any of your front end applications, you can use Morales to query for the token URI and that way get the image, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The same thing on OpenSea, if we go to testnet OpenSea, here on testnet OpenSea, if we search for our contract, Moon NFTs, it already finds two NFTs over here. And it has the images for them as well. And if we click them, you also get the attributes because they're stored in the metadata on our Firebase storage bucket. How cool is that? So that is how you can use Firebase to store NFT metadata. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one. But if you are living in October of 2022, be sure to sign up for the Defining DeFi Hackathon that Morales is joining forces with Google. The deadline for submissions is November 11th, but the deadline for joining the hackathon is October 14th. So you still have 11 days from the timing of this video. And if you build cool projects, you'll have a chance to win prizes from the massive prize pool of 150,000 US dollars. So go ahead to morales.io slash Google dash hackathon to sign up and register now for the Defining DeFi Hackathon. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.